Profit is the oxygen for your business. Without it, you will die. And uh, in this episode, I'm going to show you how to double your profits in the next 30 days. If you're new to the show, this is the E-Commerce Alley podcast where we believe that great brands are built on passionate leadership, smart operations, and of course, uh, powerful marketing. I'm Josh Coffey, and I've been helping grow e-commerce brands for more than a decade now, which is pretty crazy to look uh, back at that. And this podcast has one mission, and that is to help you grow your vision, your team, and your profit, which is my favorite thing, profit. Profit is the, uh, the best thing because there's a phrase out there, and don't quote me on it, it's something along the lines of top line is vanity and bottom line is sanity. You know, I had a, I, we've had stories throughout the years of uh, not only in our business, but clients we work with, and uh, where you have this top line that looks really, really good. And, you know, maybe you see this where you see social media and people are flaunting their seven and multiple eight figure brands, and the, you know, everyone speaks in top line. It's like top line speak, which, is just so insane to me because when you get to the bottom of it, oftentimes you'll learn that most businesses are not as profitable as you might think based on what you see them doing on the top line. Because the top line is vanity. If you're unprofitable, if you're upside down, how people feel behind the scenes unless you have venture backing and you have uh, you have tons of capital that you're sitting on that was just handed to you and you can burn cash like it's your job, then for the rest of us out there, uh, you have to have profit built in. You know, I'll tell you a story. We had a client that was on track to do uh, in their second year of business. They did a little over over six hundred. It was almost seven hundred thousand in their first year. The second year was on track to do. $1.2 million in sales, and they went bankrupt. They went bankrupt in the second year. We had another client, uh, top line, almost $4 million, uh, pushing up to the $5 million, barely scraping by, like barely scraping by, uh, actually to the point where like they're not taking paychecks, like they're, they're almost upside down, like they're investing a lot of personal money in it. And so like this is not the first time I, I've experienced these firsthand. Those are just two stories. You know, we work with clients, we coach people. And so I want to talk about profit because a lot of times it's just flat out, it's just overlooked. And with enough profit, like profit is one of those things. And some of the things I'm going to talk about in this episode are they're just little levers, but they can move mountains uh, inside your business. And so before I dive into this, I, what I want you to do is I want you to just think like, hey, you know, what did it feel like in your business? when things were cash flowing great. And on top of that, you sat on a, a stack of, of cash and profit in your bank account. You know, how did that feel in that moment? And maybe you've never been in that moment or never felt like that before. And if you haven't, that's okay. Hopefully this podcast really helps with that. But if you have, just remember that, like how did that feel when you were sitting on profit? It probably felt pretty good. It probably felt like you had options. Like there was just way less stress in your life that you're not staying up all night and, and, and having to worry about all of these things. And so in business, I've learned as an entrepreneur, you have these different ebbs and these flows. And so the goal though is to increase your profit. So what I wanna do is I wanna give you three ways that you can double your profits in the next 30 days. And it might sound impossible, it might sound ludicrous, but we've done it and I have seen it done time and time again if you know what levers to pull and you pull the right ones at the right amount of pressure, all right? So when, when I go through this though, what I, want to, what I want to think about is I'm gonna be looking at this from an individual product perspective, all right? So I'm not going to be considering things like, hey, uh, you need to, Order more volume so you can de of raw materials so you can decrease your cost of goods or or minimize your fixed expenses and cut this software and cut that software. Like yes, you should absolutely be thinking about those things. And if you do those, those are going to increase your overall profits. But what I'm going to talk about is I actually want to talk about profit on a uh, an individual customer perspective, not like a large scale perspective. All right. So there are three primary ways, and I'm going to share each one and what that kind of looks like, and then I'm going to dive into each one of these. So the first way you can double your profits is simply double the number of customers. And this is this means volume, right? If you have 200 customers coming in per month, all you need to do is get to 400 customers per month and you have then doubled the profit from an overall volume standpoint. The second way is to double the amount spent. And this is your average order value, your AOV. So let's say your average order value right now is $50. Well, if we can get them to spend $100, we will then do 
a similar thing. We're gonna get them to spend twice as much, right? So this is an immediate, uh, an immediate realized doubling right there. And then the third way is to double the amount spent over time, and we call this LTV, lifetime value. So they might spend $50 with you, let's use the AOV example, they might spend $50 average order value the first time, they might spend $50 a month from now, and they might spend $50 in month three. And so that gives a, a three month LTV at least of $150. And now some, some products are more LTV based products. A lot of uh, reoccurring things like supplements or uh, coffee is another example, replenishables, things like that are ones that are going to have a higher LTV, but they might have a little lower margin on the front end. And so the three things you have, you could double the amount of customers, this is volume, you can double the amount that they spend, this is AOV, or you can double the amount spent over time, and this is LTV. Now, if I'm looking at these, let's kind of dive into the three of these and, and start, start to think what can this look like in my business? What are those best levers? And I'm gonna go through all three of these. And as I go through these, what I want you to do is I want you to be thinking about your business. And I want you to say, okay, of these three things that Josh is talking through to right now, of these three things, where should my focus go first, all right? So I want you to think about that. When I get to the end, I'm gonna tell you the order that I believe that you should do these in uh, just based on experience. And then also uh, just based on what, what kind of makes some logical sense to me. So kind of place yourself as I'm going through here and then see how we kind of line up at the end. Now, the first way is to double the number of customers, right? So if we, go, if we have 200 customers a month and we go to 400 customers a month, we've then doubled the volume of our customers. Now there are a few ways that you can do this. Uh, one might be to increase your ad spend or your marketing output in another capacity, right? This means uh, if, if I know that it, if it costs me, and I like to use paid ads because it's very tangible and easy to use math. Uh, if, if it costs me $25 to acquire a new customer, then, and I need to add 200 more per month, then I need to spend $5,000 a month more in my advertising in order to get that, right? 200 new customers I need times $25, that gets me to $5,000 per month. And that's of course, if things were linear and everything worked out exactly how I wanted it. But we're just using simple math here, right? So if I wanted to double that, I can increase my ad spend or I can increase my marketing uh, output in another channel. The next way you could do it is you could increase your ad effectiveness. You can look at the advertising lever that you're pulling right there that we were just talking about, and you could work to create better ads that then get better click-through rate. So if you can get your click-through rate up, if you can double your click-through rate, cut your costs in half, or you can make your ads more effective by make, uh, making highly engaged ads that cut your CPMs in half, that's gonna do the same thing. If we cut our CPMs in half with the same click-through rate, we're gonna double the amount uh, of we're gonna double the amount of clicks we're doing with the same ad spend, or if we double our click-through rate, we're gonna double the amount of clicks with the same ad spend, and so that's gonna increase our ad effectiveness. And the other way you can do this is you can increase your conversion rate. This is where you get off platform of an ad network, you go to your website and say, hey, how do I get my conversion rate from like a one to a two, or 1.5 to a three? And this is actually a lever that's one of the uh, best ones to pull because you can keep increasing ad spend, but another thing you can do that's like a, a really simple tweak is you know if you take your conversion rate, it's it's much easier to get your conversion rate from a one to a two than to take your ad spend, to, than to double the effectiveness of your ads, to double your ROAS or to double your ad spend and get the same results. And so increasing your conversion rate is one of those things you could do to help double your customers. Now the downside to this, and this is, this is of course what we all experience because we all wanna double our customers, right? Is that it's a volume game and then over time you will have diminishing uh, returns if you don't incorporate the other two uh, that I'm going to talk about. But real quick, uh, before I do dive into those, uh, if you are enjoying this podcast, if you've listened to the E-Commerce Alley podcast and you do uh, want to get additional training, you wanna get resources, access to our weekly live streams in our community, uh, I do recommend join the E-Commerce Alley Facebook group. Uh, you can search it by going to Facebook and then just searching the E-Commerce Alley uh, or you can go to alleypodcast.com slash group. It's completely free, tons of additional content, tons of uh, training and live streams every week inside the studio. Uh, go check it out, you will Absolutely love it. All right, so the first one is to double the number of customers. This is volume. We can increase ad spend or marketing output. We can increase the effectiveness of those efforts or we can increase the conversion rate. The second way is that you can double the amount spent 
on your first order. Now I added a little piece here, right? Because if I'm trying to double my profit in 30 days, uh, you not only just doubling the amount spent on that first, uh, in general, we wanna double it really on that first order, right? Double the, the amount spent on the first order because the AOV takes into consideration repeat business. So if we could double that first order, it's gonna help us generate more profit in the first 30 days if I'm using the 30 day windows. That means I need to go from, let's say an average order value of 50 to 100 or from 40 to 80. We just gotta, we have to double that. And so uh, there are a few ways that we'll do this to increase uh, the average order value. The first way is to increase the product price. Now, this is kind of hard because we're really tied to numbers and we always think, oh, well, no one's gonna pay this much more for that. And what's interesting is um, with the right positioning and the right messaging and just by simply trying it, you might find out that people will pay more for your products. It's just stuff we see. It's interesting because most people uh, test things like headlines and creatives and page copy, but don't test product pricing thresholds. And we've done this even in our own business. We've tested things where we're increasing things 50%. And when we've increased pricing 50% or 25%, we usually don't see a decrease in conversion by that amount. So we might increase price on something by 50%, or 25%, but we only see a decrease in conversion by 5%. And so we actually net more by doing that. So test different product th pricing thresholds to see if you can increase AOV. That is one thing you could do very easily. Another one is to add bundling options. We had a we had a, a candle client that we worked with and their average order value, I forget the exact amount, it was, it was in like the, uh, the high 40s. And we ended up increasing the AOV by 65% by simply adding a mix and match bundling option to their website. So candles are one of those products that are really great for bundling. Certain products are good for it, others not as much. Well, when people buy candles, they usually buy multiple. And so all we did was we added an app from Shopify that allowed people to bundle different apps or bundle different uh, candles and mix and match them. And by doing that, we increased average order value by 65% overnight. Like overnight, AOV went up by 65%. Now, another way you could do this is by adding, increase your AOV, and this is probably uh, one of the highest levers we see work as far as AOV goes, like right off the bat, is to add pre-purchase upsells. Now, there are different tools to do this. Uh, our recommended tool, for Shopify at least, is Zipify one-click upsell. And it's a wonderful tool. Many of our clients use it and it allows you to do pre-purchase upsells. When someone gets to their cart, before they go to checkout, it pops up and it'll give them special offers and you can customize how this looks. And, and we see tons of people take us up on this and it increases our, our upsell take rate or our uh, AOV dramatically. Now on the back end side of that, we also have post-purchase upsells and downsells. So after somebody has checked out, we take them to a page that says, hey, but wait, there's more, you know? <laughs> but, but hold on, for a limited time, you'll get access to these. They're, these are the discounts and they could in one click, tap it and add it to their order. Now, this is fresh in my mind because we just met with a client yesterday uh, that we installed all of this, all of uh, pre-purchase and post-purchase upsells. And we just we just installed a new series of these for them that they weren't really using. And we set them up and their AOV went from 180 to $245 by that simple shift, adding pre-purchase and adding post-purchase. You're talking an hour to an hour and a half of work and we were able to add that much more revenue that quickly. So pre-purchase upsells and then post-purchase upsells and downsells. Now, the other way, and this is another really, really big one uh, that will really move the needle here, is to create what I call a cash cow offer. So if you're running ads, one thing with ads is a lot of times we'll just run people to uh, home pages, and sometimes that works for certain brands, or we'll run them straight just to a product page. And what we've learned is that Many times by, instead of sending people to a product, we send them, we, we push them to what we call a cash cow offer, you see an increase in average order value. Now what that means is, rather than just saying, hey, buy this product, we're saying, hey, buy two of these and get this gift for free, or hey, 20% off your first order, or hey, buy these three, get one 50% off. And so that's an example of, the, that's a super simplistic way of looking at an offer. And I'll tell you a story, we had a client, that is in the apparel industry, and his uh, average order value hovered around $40. 
Well, he had been running ads straight to his apparel product pages. And the, the Rolaz was kind of struggling there and he was running to the apparel product pages. And then after some different trial and error and trying some different things, we put together an offer and it was buy two, get one for $7. Buy two shirts, get one shirt for $7. And after implementing that, his average order value now or since doing that in, in, in the first seven days went from $40 to $66 and it has maintained that now for several months. So from $40 average order value up to 66, which is a 65% increase in average order value from one small shift. Now, what gets powerful is when you start to mix and match those, right? When you say, okay, I'm gonna add bundling, I'm gonna test some product pricing thresholds, I'm gonna add pre-purchase, I'm gonna add post-purchase, and I'm gonna position a cash cow offer for my Facebook ads or my Google ads or whatever that is, then that's when you start to make substantial growth in your profits. Now, the third way is to double the amount somebody spends, and I added a piece here, in 30 days. Because if I'm trying to double my profit in 30 days, then what I wanna do is I need to increase the 30-day lifetime value. So average order value is the order. Lifetime value, if I do a 30-day LTV, I'm trying to say how much can I generate from a customer in the first 30 days days. So there are multiple ways you can do this. Now, you can expand this out because ultimately, I believe you need to have a solid system for it, for having strong 30, 60, and 90 day lifetime values. Uh, and so I'm going to give you four ways that you can get someone to double the amount that they spend with you uh, in those first 30 days to have a, 30, a nice 30 day LTV, get them to come back, get them to buy more uh, just in the first 30 days. Now, number one, you have to have great products. Now this is real cliche, but you have to have great products because if you have bad products, people are not gonna buy again. And if you're trying to get LTV, meaning you're getting them to buy a second, third, or fourth time, getting them to buy more, then you need to have great products. If you have bad products, no one's gonna ever buy from you. It's gonna be a one hit wonder and they're gone. Obviously, that probably unspoken rule, we all know that, but sometimes we don't think about that. How great is your customer experience? How great is your packaging? How great are your products? Do you actually have conviction and belief in those? And are they the best that you believe they can be? Now, the second way is to have something called a bounce back flow. So a bounce back flow, essentially, it's an email automation that you set up that as soon as somebody places that order, they get another email that gives them a small window of time and it incentivizes them to make an immediate second purchase. Now, an example of this might be, it might be, okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and use, let's use, let's use running shoes. So if I was selling running shoes and someone bought a pair of running shoes, uh, but they never bought my socks, let's say that's the accessory, right? I could have a bounce back flow that shoots them and says, hey, we're so excited. Thanks for purchasing these shoes. For the next three hours, we're gonna give you 60% off two pairs of, uh, if you buy two pairs of socks. And so it's a limited time, it's creating urgency, right? It's based on that purchase, and so it incentivizes an immediate second purchase. So in that very first day, we're trying to get them to buy two different things. Or you could say, hey, for the next three hours, we're actually gonna give you free shipping or a free pair of socks if you buy a second pair of shoes. There are a lot of ways you can spin this, a lot of different ways you can kind of position it, different offers, and you can actually build bounce pack flows for different product collections. Like if I bought shoes and I had a pair of socks in my, my cart or I bought those too, then we probably wouldn't want to be pushing the socks. And so you could build different variations of these and it's called a bounce back flow. It incentivizes that immediate second purchase. Now, another way is simply to increase the frequency of your communication. If you're currently communicating with your list once a week, Go to twice, go to three times a week, and simply by doing that, you will increase that 30-day LTV. And the other way you can do this is to have a cadence. The final way I'm gonna give you here, at least. There are a lot of ways to do these, but I'm giving you like top four here. The final way is to release new products regularly. Have a cadence for releasing new products because new products are gonna create new cash injection inside your business. So there, those are four ways you can double the amount someone spends or get them to at least spend more in the first 30 days to increase that LTV. First, you need great products, bounce back flow, increase that frequency, and release new products. Now, if you are on YouTube, uh, drop in the comments what you want to work on in your business, uh, in your business uh, that we just talked about. Those three different things. Are you trying to double your customers? Are you trying to uh, double the amount that you're getting them to spend on that first order? Or are you trying to, number three, get them to double the amount they spend with you 
in the first 30 days, in their 30 day lifetime value. We'd love to see kind of what you got from this podcast. Now, with all of these in mind, the question becomes, where should you start? And at the beginning, I kind of asked you, hey, as we go through this, you know, what would that be? Should I double my customers? Should I increase my, my work to double my AOV? Should I try to double my 30 day lifetime value? Uh, what should I be focusing on first? And now they're all great and you should do all of them, but you can't do everything because we have to put our attention somewhere. So what should you do and in what order? Well, I'm gonna give you what my suggestion would be. My suggestion is that you first work on the foundation and with what you already have, right? If I'm gonna increase the number of customers and I need to spend more on ads, I'm gonna have to increase my ad spend. So I'm gonna keep that. And so the first thing I wanna do is I want to work on increasing first order AOV. So go back and listen to those examples of what you could do from the bundling to the pre-purchase, the post-purchase, those things. I'm gonna work on increasing first order AOV. As a, after I've spent time doing that, I'm gonna move into increasing and setting things up to increase the 30-day lifetime value through the bounce back flow, increasing communication, maybe considering releasing new products once a quarter every so often. If I have a, a, a business that's easy to release products, you could do one a month. And then the final thing is then with that, put in place, I'm gonna work on increasing the number of customers. So I'm gonna go number two, number three, and then go back to number one. Because average order value and lifetime value are gonna allow you to work with what you already have and what you're already spending on ads. You don't have to increase your ad spend to improve those things. So I'm gonna to try to get, I'm gonna to try to squeeze more out of what I already have, the traffic that I already have, before I go and pour gasoline on the fire. So. I wanna have an optimized foundation before I go pour gasoline on this fire by simply increasing the marketing output. So that's my recommendation. So if you wanna double your profits in the next 30 days, I recommend you allocate time to improving these areas inside your business. And again, my advice is to begin. First, improving that first order AOV, increasing the 30 day LTV, and then increasing the number of customers, just pouring the gasoline, gasoline on the fire with more marketing output. Now, you, my friend, have been listening to the E-Commerce Alley podcast produced by Dylan Counts. Uh, if you want to join our free community uh, of e-commerce business leaders, as well as get exclusive access to weekly live stream, I mean, I mean, I'm in the studio here every single week. We're doing trainings. We're doing over the shoulders. Uh, if you want to get access to that and additional resources, join the free Facebook group. It's absolutely free. You're going to love it. I promise. Or your money back. Go to alleypodcast.com slash group or just search us on Facebook. So on behalf of my entire team, team, I want to say thank you for being our listener and I'll see you in the next episode.